We're going to begin by talking about hardware emulations. And as I mentioned in the presentation, there's always like freeware that's available and also paidware that's going to uh, fit into this category. So the instruments we're gonna look at, they all fit into the categories that we just discussed and went over previously. And we're gonna start by talking about the OBXD, which I assume the D stands for digital, which is a freeware plugin that's roughly emulating the instrument you see in front of you. And when we actually open up the plugin version, you'll see the resemblance immediately. So this synthesizer was made by Oberheim in 1979. And in the synthesis course, we're gonna talk a lot more about the evolution and the history and really get into all of those fidgety details that I know everyone loves so much. But what's important to note about this instrument right now is that what really made this unique and what made Oberheim a little bit more unique than some of the other companies was that they really spent a lot of time in creating an instrument that you could play polyphonically, meaning you could actually play chords um, and you you didn't have to worry so much about getting tunings of different oscillators just right to give you the effect of playing a chord. You actually literally could go in there and play chords. Things like the Mini Moog and some of the early synthesizers, they really did not allow for that. It wasn't possible. It was only monophonic, I meaning you could only hit one note at a time. So this uh, particular line and brand of instruments really focused on the polyphony thing. And you're going to see that when we jump in and actually look at the instrument. Here it is, the OBXD, and I'm assuming that D does stand for digital. Now, you'll note that this says virtual analog synthesizer, and in our categorization, I wouldn't necessarily put this in the VA group because to me, a virtual analog synth is something that's not really going for a very specific hardware equivalent. So don't let that name confuse you. This clearly looks like the picture we just saw and is indeed trying to emulate the sound and overall feel of an Oberheim synthesizer. So when you are looking through different plugins that are available, you want to check and make sure and see, okay, does this instrument actually have a hardware equivalent? somewhere and when you're doing the research that will be one of the first things you see and when you realize that it does have a hardware equivalent that's when you're able to put it into that hardware emulations category so we're not going to go through exactly how this instrument works it's very simple as you can see we'll do a little bit with it but um, if you went through the 101 course this is pretty intuitive right now we have all our different block sections which is how we want to view one of these instruments and from there we should be able to figure some things out but what makes this unique like I mentioned before is the ability to actually play chords with it so I'm just gonna use one oscillator right now to really make this point and we'll be able to hear if I go up an octave you can hear it has a very analog kind of dirty sound but And then you have different modes for if you actually go over the allotted number of voices. Because our computers are so powerful today, I should be able to run this with eight voices, no problem. But I can bring up like the amplifier envelope here and... And sometimes you'll be able to actually hear some of the notes sort of getting cut off and stolen once you go over that eight value. But that's just something to keep in the back of your mind. But you can still play different chords. if you wanted, very simple. But where this becomes a lot more hardware emulation and a lot less virtual analog is with the actual tuning. You can see that if I put in oscillator two here, First of all, we're hearing that little bit of detune. If I put this all the way down, we don't have that. But actually tuning the oscillators is kind of difficult because you don't have a number readout. So you really have to use your ears. And in my case, I'm actually going to use the display down here to change the tuning of this because it can be really difficult to lock it in otherwise. So let's say I wanna put these in tune, but like an octave apart maybe. I'm gonna have to really listen closely. You can hear that beating, and then you'll eventually hear it lock in. So we're in tune, but you would never really know that unless you bring the detune all the way down, and then you really wait till you're able to lock it in. You could hear that beating happening before, saying that we're close, and then we're able to finally lock it in. So now I'm going to detune it. And 
and I'm just playing random keys right now on my keyboard, so I'm not going for anything really special here. And this is a basic subtractive synthesizer, and you'll see that all of our examples are subtractive with the exception of one. So what subtractive really means is if I bring up our span device that we looked at before, we'll be able to see that right now we have a nice big wall of sound. And I'm definitely going to have to turn the volume down <laughs> when I edit this. But you're going to see that we have this big wall of sound. And then I take the filter, and I'm actually going to carve some of that away. And then I can add an envelope to the filter to actually make this change over time. So we could do something like, let's do a nice long attack, nice long decay, sustain somewhere in the middle, release. So now if I hit a note, you can see those overtones coming in and out. And if I increase the amount of this envelope here, we'll be able to add even more in. So all the way up there to the top, I have the option to make this a 24 dB uh, filter, pole filter as composed, compared to a 12. So it's just going to be steeper. We can go into high quality mode, key tracking, and then we do have the ability to actually go between a low pass and a high pass filter, and that's what this multi switch does. So if I bring this all the way to the right, we actually now have a high pass filter. So this is gonna be very bright when I play it. I'm gonna play lower on the keyboard. And let's actually turn the envelope off, and now you'll hear that this is a high pass as compared to a low pass. like so. And what this is really all going to come down to at the end of this entire week is that I want you to really listen to the tone of the different instruments because you'll see that so many of the controls are the same. With the exception of one instrument, the controls are almost always exactly the same and you know, it just then comes down to how it's been coded on the back end or what it's supposed to sound like. So with a hardware emulation, you really want to make it sound kind of dirty and grimy and as if it's actually an instrument that came out in the 70s or in the 80s. And I think that this emulation does a pretty good job with that. We also have our basic modulation here. So this can be a little confusing because they don't block this out and specifically tell you what all these are. But this is your LFO and that's what's actually doing the modulating. So if I turn sign on and increase the rate here, I'm going to have this uh, modulate the pitch of oscillator one. So let's put it on oscillator one. Or we could also have it actually modulate the filter cutoff. So let's go down another active. Now you can tell that the pitch knob here is actually what's setting the depth and we could also have this LFO control the pulse width if we were working with a pulse wave. The last thing I want to show you with this instrument and I'll leave the rest up for you to kind of play around with is that you can actually turn this instrument and instead of being able to play polyphonically you can actually put it into monophonic but you can have it ha play eight different voices so you can get one of those really thick sounds and to do that I just turn unison on. And let's start by just working with one oscillator for now. Let's actually reestablish the synth. So I've opened up a new instance, and we're going to actually mess around here with this unison mode. You can hear just how big and how thick of a sound you can get with this thing. Very analog, very much a hardware type of sound here. So putting the unison on. And I'm going to increase the spread, which is basically just detuning all of these voices ever so slightly. But what's really cool is that with this particular emulation, uh, this isn't on the hardware unit, but with the digital, we're able to now pan all of those different voices out to the left and right. So if you're listening in headphones or on a stereo system, you'll really be able to hear how we can push this all over the place. Again, we can actually put one of these maybe like an octave up or so. 
I'm gonna put the D tune down, do what I did before. Let's just mess around for a little bit. So as you can hear, in just a couple of minutes, I can get this really huge, thick, powerful sound. It doesn't even require a whole lot of knowledge. This is really just based on the emulation of the actual hardware unit, and thus you get this really amazing, rich, thick tone, which might work in a production for you, and then again, it might not. And that's what this really all is gonna come down to, picking the right instrument that's gonna get you the sound that you want or at least as close as possible considering the options that you have.